The most important thing about a space is its relationship to the street. And Paley is a fine example. People do speak of it as a refuge, as a place to escape from the city. This is very wrong. Paley is an intensely urban place, and one of its great assets is the vigorous street life out in front of it, and for that matter, within it. As many people will be entering and leaving and touring uh, the inside of Paley as you'll find on many a busy sidewalk. Passers-by are important too. About half will turn in and look, and about a half of them will smile. I haven't uh, calculated a smile index, that would be much too solemn. But this visual enjoyment, this secondary use, is every bit as important as the primary use. Paley is a site, a place to show people, to point to with pride, to discuss. Children seem particularly entranced with Paley. We've noticed a, quite a tendency uh, for them to run in and accelerate as they come to the steps. Passers-by will often do a double take and then walk on in. There are just a few easy steps. You don't have to make a decision. You're almost drawn in. And here, with older people, you'll sometimes see, as with children, a slight acceleration as they go up the steps. The vestibule is a social place in its own right. Now, those girl watchers swilling beer actually spoke to these girls. You'll see mothers with their children. People just standing there, waiting. It's a popular place to meet people. You'll see people meeting for, uh, again, 100% conversation. Here's a, an example of what we call reciprocal gestures. Uh, when two men, two people are sort of getting together in their conversation, there seems to be a tendency for one person to make a move and then after, a, say, seven, eight second pause for the other to reciprocate. Ah, he did it. Itinerant musicians have a very keen sense of place. And here this uh, cello player is setting up at one of the best of them. We've been looking at places that work with the street. Now let's look at a directly contrary approach, the self-contained megastructure. These are a sort of urban fortress their common denominator is that they take you away from the street. Here at Houston Center, you're going up, up, up. The plazas and the terraces are two and three levels above the street. And from the street, you are completely insulated. You can drive from the suburbs in the morning into that garage there, walk through the skyways to the office, and spend the whole day without ever having to set foot in Houston at all. This is its streetscape. No stores, no windows. Not many pedestrians either, for that matter. The street level is for cars. The one activity is a bank window for people in cars. Here's Renaissance Center in Detroit. Very striking, many attractions within. But what does it say at street level? Look at that huge berm across its entry. All that's lacking is a port cullis. Come in and be safe from Detroit, it says. Downtown Los Angeles, Broadway Plaza. Successful, inside. A few blocks away, Atlantic Richfield Plaza. Very handsome, but what's happened to the street? Where are the stores? Where are the windows? Where are the people? Going down two subterranean levels of shopping in balmy Los Angeles. In the next block, the Hotel Bonaventure. Dramatically scaled to the freeway, but not to the pedestrian. Look at the wall that it turns to the city. Have you ever seen a more brutal rejection of the street or a more unnecessary one? Ironically, 20 miles away at Disneyland, people pay good money 
to enjoy a replica of a regular old-fashioned street. The shops and windows and doors at street level. 